Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome to another Fallout 4 challenge run. In my last run, I tried to beat Fallout London as a knight, which was brutal but fun, so today I decide to take on something painful, as we're going to find out if I can beat Fallout 4's survival difficulty with only unarmed weapons and no armor. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use unarmed weapons, and all armor is banned. I must play the entire game on the survival difficulty. I can't use any bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I will only be using visual mods, and I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's jump right into the run, which starts with character creation in my pre-war bathroom where I craft the world's most resilient protagonist before spending the day looking out windows and waiting for the vault tech rep to grace me with his presence just so I can tell him no over and over until Nate decides to do the paperwork for me, filling out my name and special stats. Normally, I'd tell you my special stats right now, but I change change them later when I leave the vault, so instead we're gonna skip past that, and for now we head to check in on Baby Sean. I spin the mobile and talk with Nate, who suggests we go to the park, which just so happens to be the perfect place to use these amazing Raycon Everyday Earbuds, which offer the same audio quality you would expect from the bigger brands, but at half the price. I've been using Raycons for a few months now, and I have to say they are perfect for going on walks while listening to audiobooks or working out with some music. Their ergonomic design means they don't don't fall out like some other brands I've tried, and you can even pair them with two devices at once, which means I can swap between my computer and my smartphone with ease. You can also get them in a variety of colors, and I went with blue as it's my favorite alongside this stunning galaxy-themed carrying case. Overall, I think my favorite thing about these earbuds is the active noise cancellation as I use it almost all the time I'm using them. It's nice to just tune everything else out and listen to some music, and I liked mine so much that I got my brother-in-law to try them and he uses them daily at work now. It's really an amazing product, and you can pick yourself up a pair by going to buyraycon.com slash willow, where they currently have a sale going that is 20 to 50% off site-wide. That's right, you can get up to 50% off your order, half the price, when you go to buyraycon.com slash willow, and thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. With that, let's get back into the run, where Codsworth calls out for us, and I go check on what's going on, only to find out the robot is watching the news again, and it turns out his cartoons are predicting the end of the world, so we need to run down to the nearby vault to barely escape total atomic annihilation. After riding the elevator down into the vault, I decide to cozy up next to the peas and apple cobbler for about 150 years until I wake up just long enough to see a bald man kill Nate and kidnap Sean. With that, I sleep for another 60 or so years before waking up alone in Vault 111, where I start a rad roach killing rampage as I punch the six-legged creepy crawlies to death one by one. I then enter the vault door room and pick up a Pip-Boy, which I promptly use to unequip the vault suit and open the door. I then enter the elevator and go back to the surface, and it's here where I decide to change my character's appearance and special stats, which are a 9 in strength for unarmed damage, 1 in perception because I forgot my glasses at home, 8 in endurance for general survivability and a couple of perks, 2 in charisma so I can use the year special book to get the lone wanderer perk, 1 in intelligence as I had it beaten out of me, 6 in agility to help with sneaking and action points, and 1 in luck since I don't need it. I then ride the elevator up and get blinded by the light of the Commonwealth Wasteland, before getting to work building water purifiers and a bed and sanctuary, before speaking with Codsworth, who joins me in killing a few bloat flies around the neighborhood, and after that I head south to the Red Rocket to meet up with everyone's favorite doggo. I then use my magnificent meat hammers to pound a couple of bud bloogs into nothing but a fine red paste, getting a feel for how much damage I'm doing and how much damage I take more importantly. Afterwards, I proceed on my journey, making my way to the main street of Concord, where I help one of those Revolutionary War reenactors named Preston kill off a bunch of raiders before ignoring his pleas for help and instead make my way over to this old trash dealing woman and flirt with her so that she'll give me a discount on a set of brass knuckles. With my new weapon in hand, I continue heading south and it's now where I want to reveal my main plan for getting through this with the least amount of pain possible. Some of you may have noticed that I went with one intelligence and one luck, which means that I'm going 
to level incredibly slowly, and this was deliberate. I want to avoid leveling up as much as possible in this run, as I worry the game will become impossible if I level up a ton, because I simply will not scale in terms of damage resistance. So instead, I need to keep the enemies as weak as possible, and since they scale to my level, I need to get a really strong weapon early on and use it to rush through the main storyline. So my plan as of the moment is to make my way over to the Park Street Station, because there's a super mutant behemoth named Swan who lives in the pond nearby that station. You may be asking, why kill Swan? Well, he just so happens to have the Furious Power Fist, which is weirdly the only guaranteed legendary item that is also not a unique item, and he always has it, so I make my way over there and die. A lot trying to cheese him, but he kills me over and over with the bold strategy of throwing rocks at mock fuck. And when that doesn't happen, I manage to lure him over to this cheese spot where you hide in the entrance to Park Street Station, but you're supposed to do this cheese with a ranged weapon, and anytime I even go into vats to try and hit him, I get killed by one of his melee attacks, and with that, I need more damage. There's no ifs, ands, or buts to that, so I head back to Diamond City where I talk with Piper who gets Danny to open the gate by lying. I then ignore the mayor and head inside where I talk with Ellie at Nick's office completing a quest and giving me a level up as she asks me to go find Nick in Vault 114. With that, I use my level up to put a point into the blacksmith perk before upgrading my knuckles as much as possible so I can attempt to fight Swan once more, but after one death I know this isn't going to work, so I instead try and progress the main story by fighting through the Triggermen in Park Street Station, but that is just not possible. I can kill a couple of them, but I'm just too frail to clear entire rooms of Triggermen. With all of my best laid plans getting shot down so quickly, I decide that staying a low level just isn't going to be a possibility, so now I just need to power level as quickly as possible. Now, here I had a choice. Restart the run and go with a build that is more suited for that task, or and hear me out, do things the difficult way, and just find a bunch of easy quests to level me up very quickly, and hope that I don't need to be more than like, say, level 17, because after that point, my build will level exponentially slower. I've been called many things, but a smart man is not one of them, so I decide to go with the brute force tactic of using the horrible build for leveling to level up. With that, I head over and take on a bunch of easy quests, starting with Diamond City, where I let Piper interview me completing the story of the century quest which is probably the easiest quest in the game now that I think about it. With that out of the way, I head back north to Cambridge Police Station and help Paladin Dance kill a ton of ghouls while taking quite the beating from them myself. I then talk with him and agree to head over to Arcjet Systems to help him find something called the Deep Range Transmitter. So I follow him over to the pre-war rocket manufacturer while helping him fight through some raiders and dogs, and upon entering the facility, I use a couple of terminals to open a door to a room that's filled with Institute synths that I quickly dug to. On my next attempt, I take it a lot more passively and let Dance do the heavy lifting as I only help out with finishing off synths that get too close to him. I watch him tear through the entire building and eventually I set him on fire using a rocket engine before riding up an elevator to the control room where we kill more synths and find the deep range transmitter. Together we head outside and he offers me a place in the Brotherhood of Steel and gives me the Righteous Authority laser rifle. I agree to join the Brotherhood before heading further north until I I come across Trudy's Diner, where I talk with Trudy who wants me to kill a drug dealer named Wolfgang outside. I tell her no and then try and talk with Wolfgang, but he decides to try and kill me. I kill him and then immediately die to his lackey Simone before coming back and trying again, but this time I skip the whole talking to people part and immediately kill Wolfgang before running inside the diner to hide from Simone. A bit later, after I heal up, I run out and chase down Simone before killing her as well, then collect my reward from Trudy, who I also also trade with. I then head to the Museum of Freedom and start fighting my way through the raiders inside, and the combat is surprisingly easy as with two points in the sneak perk I can get really close to the raiders and use vats to get stealth criticals to kill them. I do end up dying once to this raider who is just a crack shot, but on my second attempt I clear the entirety of the museum and proceed to speak with the last minute man Preston Garvey and his buddy Sturgis about how we're all gonna get out of here alive. I agree with a plan to get some power armor 
armor and a minigun before promptly ignoring the plan, instead heading up to the roof of the Museum of Freedom where I parkour down and run down a side street to trigger the Deathclaw to spawn. With that done, I run back and kill the leader of the raiders and wait for the Deathclaw to kill the rest of them. I then sit in this hardware store for an obnoxiously long time, letting Preston chip away at the Deathclaw's health before using vats to give this Deathclaw a first class Bye, ticket a to hell time. on Willow Airlines. With the Deathclaw enjoying his mid-flight snack, I return to Preston and speak with him and Mama Murphy before heading to Sanctuary where I speak with Preston again, completing the quest and leveling up as Preston gives me another quest to help out a nearby settlement. I then spend a while building some beds, a farm, and some defenses for Sanctuary before speaking with Sturgis to complete the Sanctuary quest, getting me close to another level up. I then craft a bunch of shelves to get the last bit of experience to level up before continuing on my rampage through the Commonwealth by making my way to a nearby settlement called Ten Pines Bluff to help them out for Preston. The settlers there ask me to go kill the raiders over at the Corvega assembly plant and I gladly make my way there, sneaking my way inside, while going on a killing rampage in the nearest bathroom. This works surprisingly well as I punch through all of the raiders that try and interrupt my private time one by one until I'm no longer detected. I then head out of the bathroom and start working my way through the factory, only to die in the next room I enter. Well, I try again and this time I decide to just be a little bit more more aggressive and it kind of works out. I still sneak my way through, but I don't wait for the enemies to come to me and instead take them out one by one until I ride this elevator up to the factory floor where the leader of the raiders hangs out. I then activate a Protectron by hacking a nearby terminal before watching it do my job for me as it kills all of the raiders in the room, including the leader, which means that this entire quest was super easy, barely an inconvenience. I then return to Ten Pines Bluff and tell them that the raiders are dead and the settlers there thank me and say that they'll join the Minutemen. Oh right, Preston wanted me to help them so that they would join the Minutemen. I didn't mention that earlier, but that's the entire reason we did all of this. So I report back to Preston and he promotes me to the General of the Minutemen and then tells me to go help another settlement named Oberland Station with another raider issue. So I go there and speak with the settlers and they tell me I need to wipe out the raiders of Backstreet Apparel. So I head over and do just that. This one really wasn't that difficult as I basically just stealth kill a few raiders and a turret it, and then find the leader who was right next to the front entrance. With these missions, you only have to kill the leader, so with one turret and four raiders dead, I head off towards Park Street Station and try my luck at killing Swan once again. While it goes better, it's still out of my reach to do so for now, so instead I head back to Diamond City and find myself inside the Colonial Tap House where I sit there and watch a desperate man named Paul get into a fistfight with the bartender Henry because Henry is screwing his wife Darcy. I then talk with Paul outside the bar and he asks me to be the muscle to intimidate <laughs> <laughs> Indimidate. I'm Doug Dimidome of the Doug Dugsdale Dimidome. Dim 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 dim. <laughs> Oh man, he asks me to intimidate Henry for him, and we proceed to go to the bar together where Paul pulls a gun on Henry, and I try to convince him to calm down, but fail and get absolutely blasted by Henry. I then go through all of that again, but this time I let Paul and Henry handle their issues between themselves, and Henry kills Paul. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh Rick. Oh man. Oh, I don't know. Oh jeez. Oh my god, I just apparently cannot speak today. Henry kills Paul before asking me to help him ambush a drug deal. I agree, and I can speak clearly now. The rain is gone. Oh yeah, I was watching this Willow video, and then 12 minutes in, he starts talking about Doug Dimidome and fucking acting like Morty from Rick and Morty, and oh man, it's just so annoying. I think I'm gonna unsubscribe. Anyways, I agree and head over to the Kim deal and through the clever use of Kims and Vats, I kill all of the drug dealers and take the Caps and Kims for myself and these will be incredibly useful as Kims are going to be pivotal for most of my strategies later on. I return to Oberlin Station and the settlers there join the Minutemen, letting me report to Preston who sends me off to establish a settlement at the Starlight Drive-In. So I head over there, clear out some mole rats, set up a radio antenna and then return to Preston 
assist in completing the quest. He then tells me that the settlers over at County Crossing need help dealing with some ghouls, but before heading over there I decide to check out Covenant, a nearby gated community that makes me take a test called the Safe Test to enter, before getting all up in everyone's business by pickpocketing a key to a house from the mayor, and then snooping around to find a password to this terminal that reveals the entire settlement is a front for some facility on the other side of the lake. I then inform this guy named Honest Ann that the missing people he's looking for were taken to the facility and that I'll help him get his missing person back. I then speak with the mayor on my way out of Covenant who pays me a hundred caps to drop the entire investigation which I gladly take before heading directly to the facility and getting stuck into a long combat section where I die a few times. The guards down here all have decent weapons and armor so I have to take each fight slowly but eventually I manage to use Vat's stealth and my trusty honest Dan distraction tactic to kill off all of the guards and confront the scientist running the facility. It turns out she's trying to find a way to identify synths using psychological tests so that way she can find and kill all of the synths in the commonwealth. This has always confused me a little bit. They constantly talk how there is no way to detect if someone is a synth, but we also know that synths don't age, need food, and are apparently immune to diseases. Like, it really feels there are so many ways that a test could be successful in figuring out a synth from a non-synth without having to kill them. Like, just off the top of my head, try and infect them with a known curable disease and see if it actually takes hold. Unless I'm misunderstanding the lore, I feel like this would all be something someone could and knowing the Fallout universe would find out on accident. Like, we have serial killers that do insanely messed up things. You're telling me not one of them has like a fetish with giving people diseases like come on th th this just seems like it would have been something found out by accident much less by people trying to figure it out anyways tangent aside i allow her to continue her work mostly because i hate honest dan for a litany of reasons that go back about four years now. Anyways, I kill Honest Anne and she pays me before killing the Stockton girl before sending me on my way saying that Covenant is my ally now. I return to Covenant and build a bunch of shelves to level up to level 11 and at this point I have two points in both the Iron Fist and Sneak perks, one point in the Lone Wanderer, Blacksmith, Ninja, and Aqua Girl points and I've used two points to increase agility which is important as my next goal is to get the agility bobblehead so I can have a high enough agility stat to get the Blitz perk on my next level up. So without a further ado, I swim for a really long time over to this beach ship named the FMS North Star, which I quickly enter and use a ton of jet to run past some Norwegian raiders and grab the agility bobblehead before sliding down the hull of the ship and swimming away. I am honestly blown away that this just worked on my first try. Now all I need to do is level up one more time so I can get a point into the blitz perk, so I head over to County Crossing as they need me to help clear out the ghouls in the nearby National Guard training yard. I head inside and die a lot. It was really a pain as ghouls are kind of my least favorite melee enemy in Fallout because they have a nasty habit of getting off multiple hits very quickly and move so erratically. Anyways, I eventually managed to use stealth and a tad bit of luck with dodging and running to take down all of the ghouls one by one, only really having a big issue with the glowing one ghoul at the end as it is incredibly sturdy. With the ghouls dead, the settlers join the Minutemen and I return to Preston who for once doesn't have a settlement I need to help and instead needs me to help him take the castle. Oh, also, I level up by building more shelves and put a point into the blitz perk before I swim all the way down to the castle, and I cannot properly describe how painfully boring this bit was. For starters, I spend 10 minutes running away from Mirelurks and picking them off one by one, all the while punching Mirelurk eggs until the Mirelurk queen spawns. Then after that, I spend another nearly 20 minutes hiding from the queen and waiting for Preston and a a random Minutemen to kill the Queen and all of the other Mirelurks and needless to say it was incredibly boring. But the boredom is quickly replaced with something scuffed after I deal my first and final blow against the Queen to kill her and then go to try and build 
generators to get the radio working, but for whatever reason, I can't build in most of the castle. So I end up quitting out of the game and installing a mod that lets me place objects anywhere inside of a settlement boundaries, and with that, I finally fix the radio and complete the quest. With that, I head back towards Diamond City and along the way, level up taking the third rank of the Seltz perk before heading over to the Boston Public Library, where I bluff my way past a building security system so I can grab the intelligence bobblehead and watch these robots absolutely destroy a ton of super mutants before going and trying to take on Swan once again. I end up dying a couple of times to the big green bird lover before luring him over to the entrance of Park Street Station, where I use vets and running away alongside a ton of chems to fell the massive mutant and claim the furious power fist from his big green corpse. This power fist happens to have the furious legendary effect, which is kind of obvious. I don't know why I'm stating that. Either way, this legendary effect means that consecutive attacks against the same enemy do more and more damage. Basically, it's a tank killer. With my new death dealing device attached to my arm, I head inside Park Street Station and get absolutely wrecked by the Triggerman. But on my second attempt, I do a lot better managing to pound all of the Triggermen in the first few rooms of the dungeon into little more than a fine red mist as I sneak around using vats to kill them one by one. I then reach the entrance to Vault 114 where I die to one of the Triggermen because vats bugged out and wouldn't let me attack him, but I continue on my way basically brute forcing each section I come across. I die a few more times and even have this moment of rage when I run into a bug that got me killed, but other than that I just slowly but surely make my way through all of the Triggermen eventually finding myself in a cafeteria room where I kill a man named Dino before saving Nick Valentine from his temporary prison. With the clockwork dick saved, I proceed to die a few more times to Skinny Malone at the entrance to the vault until I find the winning strategy of using a bunch of chems to kill off the mob boss and his goons. With that, I go outside and wait an uncomfortably long time for Nick to meet up with me there, but eventually he does and after a long conversation I agree to meet with him in his office in Diamond City. So I go do just that and and after a long interview, it's decided we need to investigate the house of a mercenary named Kellogg, who we believe is the bald man who killed Nate and kidnapped Michonne. Michonne! He kidnapped Michonne! I need Michonne, old oh boy! I'm gonna level with you. It's like 7 a.m. and I haven't slept, so this is the voiceover we're getting. Anyways, I follow Nick to the house before heading up to the mayor's office where I lockpick his safe and steal the key to Kellogg's house. We then snoop around and find out that he smokes a special brand of cigars that I quickly give to Dogmeat so that he can track him. I then head over to Fort Hagen and sneak up onto the roof to kill a couple of turrets before entering the fort itself, which ended up being a lot easier than I was expecting. Don't get me wrong, I still die a couple of times, but overall I'm able to clear each room using vats, and the actual hardest bit of the dungeon is dealing with these turrets that are mounted on the walls and ceilings, as I can't target them with vats, so I have to close the distance normally and punch them myself. Eventually though, I reach the final room with Kellogg and proceed to use vats to immediately kill him before taking down the two cents that are with him through liberal use of chems and getting lucky with them missing their shots and in the end they all lay dead and I loot Kellogg for his brains and read his diary before heading up an elevator to the roof where I see the Pridwin enter the commonwealth. After that I head over to Diamond City and speak with Nick and Piper in his office and it's decided that Nick and I are going over to Good Neighbor so we can go digging around Kellogg's brains. I make my way to the settlement and upon entering it I immediately murder an extorting thug and speak with Mayor Hancock before heading over to the memory den where I talk with Dr. Amari for a while before sprinting through Kellogg's memories to find out that the Institute uses teleportation and I need to go find a rogue scientist in the glowing sea. This is going to be rough but I've been stockpiling radix and purified water for just this occasion. My first attempt to traverse the glowing sea ends very early early on as I get a bit confused as to where I am and end up getting killed by a rad scorpion but on my second attempt I use my knowledge of the entire area of the glowing sea to make my way over to Virgil's cave without having to fight any enemies. Oh I also find some enclave soldiers in the glowing sea which is a cool addition that came with the next gen update. I really should do the next gen update quests in one of these videos but this one was just a little bit too difficult for me to be doing a bunch of side questing that I have no idea how difficult it is. Anyways, I then make my way over to Virgil's cave and there's this weird bug where I couldn't target the Deathclaw outside it in vats, but this ended up being a non-issue as I just run into the cave and speak with Virgil 
who asks me to go kill a courser so he can help me build a teleporter to get inside the institute. After that, I basically have to sprint all the way out of the glowing sea as the radiation is quickly overtaking my health bar, and I just barely escape the irradiated hellscape with only a sliver of health left, but I do manage to do so before carefully making my way back to Diamond City, where I speak with a doctor who heals my radiation and health before heading over to Green Tech Genetics and, oh boy, this was a struggle. I die multiple times just trying to get through the first two sections of combat, but once I figure out a way to get through by using a stealth boy and various chems, I manage to get past these first two rooms and my progress from there becomes a lot more consistent. Don't get me wrong, I still end up dying to things like everyone's least favorite missile launching douche canoe, but past that, I manage to pulverize my way through all of the gunners and eventually make my way all the way up to the courser, who really just isn't a challenge for me as the furious power fist is kind of designed for killing these large health pool boss style enemies, so I fell him before taking my frustrations out on everyone left in the room, and then leave Green Tech Genetics heading over to the Old North Church where I kill a bunch of ghouls with ease before meeting with the railroad leadership in this dark room, and after a long conversation I managed to convince them to decode the courser chip for me so I can get into the institute. With the chip decoded, I make my way back out to Virgil, nearly dying yet again to the radiation, and he gives me the plans for the signal interceptor. I then head back over to the castle and speak with Ronnie Shaw, who kicks off the old guns quest for me. I quickly run through the basement of the castle, disarming landmines, killing a turret, and coming across the sentry bot known as Sarge. I was a little bit worried about this fight, but I managed to kill him quickly by using vats and jet, and I also have to remember to run away the moment I kill him, because otherwise I will end up blowing up alongside him. But I managed to do all of this on my first try before proceeding to find the Minuteman Armory and build some artillery to test fire it. After blowing up an unassuming house, I speak with Preston about the signal interceptor and he agrees that the Minutemen will help me build it and to go speak with Sturgis. I do just that, building the teleporter for Sturgis, before speaking with him and he tells me to stand on the platform, which I do quickly, and get beamed into the Institute. I then spend a while testing the structural integrity of the elevator system as Father monologues on the PA system until I find Sean, who turns out to be a synth. This upsets me so much that I lose my cool a little bit and punch Father into next week before making my grand escape from the Institute by sprinting back to the elevator avoiding some synth guards before killing the two synths in the relay room by using stealth criticals. I then teleport out of the Institute and get to work prepping for them to attack the castle. I start off by heading over to Diamond City where I give new weapons and ammo to both Nick and Piper before sending them off to the castle as I feel this is a pretty good strategy to just get more bodies with better weapons to shoot at since. Continuing on that line of thought, I head over to Good Neighbor and make my way over to the third rail bar where I head into the back room and see a confrontation between a mercenary named McCready and a couple of gunners. Afterwards, I hire him to be my follower and then proceed to carefully make my way over to Concord while avoiding all combat so I don't invalidate the run before climbing up to the roof and making him get in the suit of power armor there and giving him a submachine gun. Afterwards, I send him to the castle as well before following suit and making my way there on my own. Oh, also, I sent Dogmate here earlier, so also we have the best boy in the world helping defend, and that means that this well-armed castle is ready to take on the Institute attack. I get busy building some more defenses, mostly just a bunch of turrets around the perimeter, and it's here where the Institute decides to start their attack, and I realize that for whatever reason, McCready got out of the power armor that I told him to stay in, so I quickly get Nick to take it before the synths come swarming in. The battle turns out to be quite the spectacle with all of the companions I have running around shooting very nice guns into a lot of synths alongside the Minutemen and all of the turrets. Honestly, it's the easiest time I've had with the castle defense, and I had a lot of fun watching my small army take on the Institute as they kept throwing wave after wave of synth and courser alike after me, and I also got involved in the fighting just a little bit, occasionally going in and punching the odd synth, and in the end, all of the synths lie dead or running away from the castle, and Nick proved to be the most valuable player here, as he tanked so much damage from all of these synths. By the end of the battle, all of the pieces of his power armor are broken, but I'm happy with that trade-off as I get through unscathed before speaking with Preston, who sends me to speak with Sturgis, who happens to have found a way inside the Institute. Sturgis tells me about a sewer system that can take me directly inside 
inside the Institute, so I head over and kick off the final battle of the run, and it took me hours to get through this section. It starts with, of course, the sewer system he mentioned, which wasn't too difficult, but I do end up dying to these turrets at the entrance on my first attempt, but on my second attempt I just use a stealth boy and run past them before sprinting past almost all of the other enemies in the sewer system until I encounter a couple of groups of synths. They go down without too much issue as I use vats to down them before entering the institute proper, where I spend a small eternity letting dozens, maybe even hundreds of Minutemen die as I do my best to remain hidden as I know that I'm just going to die over and over and over if I actually try and take a stand-up fight with all of the enemies in the institute. I sadly just don't have any way to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much any group of enemies as I am just too frail. I will die before I make an impact in any way, shape, or form, so I have to sit here and painfully watch Preston with the 10mm pistol I gave him earlier and a bunch of various Minutemen run through the institute dying over and over and over. I also end up dying myself quite a few times and each and every time I die I have to start from the sewers. So this took a very, very long time, but eventually I managed to make my way into the main atrium of the institute where I encounter yet more pain and suffering. You see, the issue with this section is that there is both a courser and a legendary synth that are very, very good at killing me. So I die here even more and eventually I manage to contribute just enough to the fight to kill off the courser and the legendary synth and manage to find a place to hide so that way I can let the Minutemen deal with all of the normal synths in this area. I then make my way to the director's terminal where I initiate the evacuation protocol and lift the lockdown that's been placed on the institute. After that I make my way over to the institute's reactor room where I spend a very long time watching Preston and many Minutemen run into the final reactor room and die over and over and over. I decided I'm not going to participate in this as there's two legendary synths, a bunch of normal synths, and even more turrets on the walls, and I really don't want to go through the sewer and everything else before this yet another time, so I end up sitting through the longest section of watching people run in and die that I have ever done in any video game. I honestly started feeling bad for the Minutemen at a certain point, like oh my lord so many people died for this, but eventually they clear the room and I plant a fusion charge on the reactor core before teleporting out of the institute to press a big red button, setting off the world's largest firecracker and answering the question can I beat Fallout 4's survival difficulty with only unarmed weapons and no armor? Yes. Yes, I can. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a challenge suggestion below. I'd like to thank my channel members and patrons as their support has been tremendous, and if you liked this run, you'll probably like my challenge run where I tried to beat Skyrim with only unarmed. You all are beautiful, and this is Willow, signing off. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep